Marcia. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Marcy. This channel is dedicated to exposing Watchtower lies, deception and cover up. I was one of Jehovah's Witnesses for over 30 years. I served as a regular pioneer for 10 of those years. I was contacted on the door-to-door -door work in 1987 and I left the organisation in 2022. In this video, I'm going to be addressing this question. What is the Watchtower's view of worshipping Jesus? Now, I've had many people coming on my channel and um, commenting about we should be worshipping Jehovah alone and that the worship of Jesus is wrong and they're quoting chapter and verse. I've had a lady called, uh, I think it's Tilly, who's been on and she's left me a load of verses to read and um, she feels that, that um, Jesus is not to be worshipped. But what is the Watchtower's view? on it and what was the view of the early um, Watchtower leaders such as Charles Taze Russell, J. E. Rutherford and Nathan No. What were their views? What were they publishing in the Watchtower? And it, was it different to what is being taught today? So this is what we're going to be looking at today. We're also going to be looking at as I said uh, yesterday, the silver sword and the black um, New World Translation of the Bible because there's something in there that I think that you should see. We're going to look at that in a bit, but right now we're going to get into just having a look at what I found out when I started researching what is the Watchtower's view of worshipping Jesus. So... I've got my glasses on the go. There we are. And I'm going to uh, just go back. I think these watchtowers uh, can be found at uh, jwfacts.com. So if you want to uh, go there, you can uh, see these very watchtowers that I'm going to be quoting from. And you can, uh, there's a lot, as I said, there's a lot of information there about this. Um, subject and the documentary evidence is there as well so you can go and look but I'm going to be quoting from the watchtowers and just have a quick drink I'm going to be going right back to the July 15th watchtower 1897 page 216 and the writings of Charles Taze Russell, the very first president of the Watchtower Society. So what was his view of worshipping Jesus? Well, he wrote in this Watchtower, We believe that while he was on earth, our Lord Jesus was really worshipped, and properly so. It was proper for our Lord to receive worship in view of him being the only begotten Son of the Father and his agent in the creation of all living things, including man. So we can see then that our first president, Charles T. Russell, believed it was proper for our Lord to receive worship. Now, notice that he refers to Jesus as our Lord Jesus. That's quite a, um, an endearing term to him, our Lord Jesus. And then he says, it was proper for our Lord to receive worship in view of him being the only begotten Son of the Father. So again, he refers to him as our Lord. It's a, a term of endearment. It's, it draws us. Uh, close to Jesus. What about J.F. Rutherford? Because we know that Russell passed away in 1916. He was succeeded by Joseph Franklin Rutherford. So what did he write in the Watchtower about the worship of Jesus? Shall we have a look? 
I'm quoting now the November 15th Watchtower 1939. This is our brother Rutherford, as he was known. He wrote, I quote, Jehovah God commands all to worship Christ Jesus because Christ Jesus is the express image of his father, Jehovah. <clears throat> Sorry. So according to Judge Rutherford, he says Jehovah God commands all to worship Christ Jesus. Now we know that Rutherford taught that um, angelic messengers spoke to him from God. <clears throat> so were they telling him that Jehovah God commands all to worship Christ Jesus? Well, whether they did or they didn't, he says Jehovah God commands all. All is everybody. Angels, people, everything. As I said in one of my other videos about the worship of Jesus in heaven. It was done by everybody on uh, in heaven. And then it said on the earth and underneath the earth. All is all everything and he says Jehovah God commands all to worship Christ so what about moving on in time then we're going to move on now to uh, when he's dead and gone he was succeeded by Nathan no we're going to be quoting the October 15 1945 watchtower so we've come quite a long way from Charles Taze Russell and is, are they still saying that Jesus Christ is to be worshipped? Well, what did he write? And I quote, Now at Christ's coming to reign as king, to bring in a righteous new world, Jehovah makes him infinitely higher than the godly angels or messengers, and accordingly commands their worship to him. Since Jehovah God now reigns as king, then whosoever would worship him must also bow down and worship Jehovah's chief one, namely Jesus Christ, his co-regent on the throne of theocracy. So, here we have the third president of the Watchtower Society, Nathan No telling us that uh, at Christ coming to reign as king, Jehovah makes him infinitely higher than the godly angels and accordingly commands their worship to him. So according to Nathan Moore, Jehovah commanded his angels to worship Jesus. And then he goes on to say, and since Jehovah God now reigns as king, then whosoever would worship him, that being Jehovah, they must also bow down and worship Jehovah's chief one, namely Jesus Christ, his co-regent on the throne. And we know that a co-regent has equal power and equal status, and they're treated both the same. A co-regent. It's a, a rulership of two people who are both of equal say and power. So that was the Watchtower of 1945. Now in the 1950s things began to change regarding the worship of Jesus. This coincided with the release of the New World Translation of the of the um, holy scriptures up to then the watchtower bible and Tract society had used and printed the king james version of the holy bible and in that version jesus christ was described as being worshipped in harmony with all the things that they taught and had said now, 
we're going to have a little bit of a Greek lesson because we're going to learn a Greek word. And this Greek word is called, is proskuneo, and it means reverential worship. This word proskuneo appears 60 times in the New Testament. And in the King James Version of the Bible, this word proskuneo is, con is consistently translated as worship, which is what it means, reverential worship. So whenever it says proskuneo, the King James Version translates it as worship, whether it is uh, referring to Jehovah, whether it is referring to Jesus, and even Cornelius fell down at Peter's feet, and the word proskuneo appears there in the case of him, and also in the case of John, who fell down at the angel's feet and was told to worship God. The consistency needs to be there because it is the same word. So it must be translated the same way. It makes sense. The Watchtower tells us that it does that in other areas with things it's translated. Oh yes, we, we, can, we translate things consistently. But in, the, in this word, proskuneo, well, it appears 60 times, and 14 of those 60 times, it is applied to Jesus Christ, Koskineo. But the Watchtower have decided to change the word to obeisance instead of worship when it comes to Jesus. It leaves it as worship when John falls down at the angel's feet. It leaves it as worship and translates it as worship. It translates it as worship whenever it mentions Jehovah God. But when it comes to Jesus Christ, it changes the word to obeisance. That is not what that word means. Obeisance just means to pay homage, like you take your cap off to somebody. That's what that means. It doesn't mean worship. The word used in the scriptures, if you get a kingdom into linear Bible and you look, you will see for yourself, it means worship. And it applies as worship, no matter who is being spoken about. Incidentally, the Watchtower translated the word proskuneo as obeisance in the case of Cornelius and said that he did obeisance to Peter. But Peter took it as an act of worship when he fell down before him because he said, get up, I'm only a man. He wasn't just doffing his cap to him. It's obeisance means that sort of thing, just sort of a, a nod of your head. No, he fell down on the floor and worshipped him, Toscaneo. And that is why Peter said, get up, I am only a man myself. You cannot cherry pick how to use the Greek word proskuneo. It always means reverential worship. I go to Greece every year. I've got Greek friends. I say to them, what does proskuneo mean? They say bowing down in worship. That's what it is. So, let's move on now from proskuneo to the watchtower of January 1954. And there there's an article entitled, Should We Worship Jesus? I quote, Consequently, since the scriptures teach that Jesus is not a co-person 
with the father. That's a distinct person. The answer to the above question must be no. Our worship is to go to Jehovah God. So I want to just refer back to what was said by Russell. Our Lord Jesus was really worshipped and properly so. It is proper for our Lord to receive worship. Rutherford, Jehovah God commands all to worship Christ Jesus. So my question is to the Watchtower and to anybody else who comes at me with scriptures. When did Jehovah God direct them to stop worshipping Jesus? Show me the scripture please because when you can show me the scripture then i might be willing to listen but i'm not going to be willing to listen when the watchtower itself teaches for all those years that jesus was to be worshipped And if you come at me now saying, well, it's all new light, are we to believe that our Lord Jesus and his Father chose an idolatrous religion that worshipped someone who wasn't to be worshipped to, to be in charge of all his belongings on earth, as we're taught, did he? I don't think he did. I know he did not. So, the Watchtower, if you've seen it yourself, go to uh, JW Facts and look at the Watchtowers yourself. You need to prove it. As I've said, stack up the evidence. If you just believe what you're told, you'll never find out anything. So, I'm now going to turn to the Bible. Because I want to talk about what I found out yesterday. Now, I'm in a Facebook forum called JW Escape. And there's a lot of information comes through there. The, the lady that set up that group as a YouTube channel and she's a great exposer of facts like I am. I believe in producing the facts so that people can learn learn the facts of something. We don't want hearsay and gossip. We want to know the facts. And she does this and she's got a group and you have to apply to join if you want to find out what's in there. But there's a lot of information in there. And one of her subscribers mentioned something about the um, Black Bible. This one. This is describing Jehovah's Witnesses as the, the Watchtower, should I say. The Watchtower. Let's get it right. The Watchtower organisation has been part of the Antichrist. The Antichrist is someone or something that keeps denying Christ. What is due? If it's worship and they, they take his worship away, it is part of the Antichrist. If they don't honour him in the way that the Bible directs, it is part of the Antichrist. Now I'm going to show you what they wrote in here regarding Jesus at Matthew chapter 2 when Jesus was born right at the beginning as a baby we know that three men went to visit him and pay uh, give, bring him gifts some people called them the Magi 
some people call them the three wise men. But these three people went to visit Jesus. We're going to look at uh, Matthew chapter 2. And it says, they followed the star and the star went ahead of them until it came to a stop above where the young child was. On seeing the star, they rejoiced very much indeed. That's reading uh, Matthew chapter 2 and verse 10. Going on to verse 11, it says, And when they went into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, its mother. Not his mother. Its mother. It. Falling down, they did, the word is proskuneo, but the watchtower has changed it from reverential worship, that, that's what it means, to obeisance. Falling down, they did obeisance to it. Not to him. Not to Jesus. It. It says they also opened their treasures and presented it with gifts, gold, frankincense and myrrh. They're referring to our Lord. Charles Taze Russell referred to Jesus as our Lord Jesus. Our Lord. At the very least, this should have been translated as him. They saw him with his mother. And falling down, they did obeisance, or they did worship to him. And they presented him with gifts. That's how it should read. And they put it in there because they have no respect for him. And when this was pointed out by somebody, well, they quickly changed it. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you now in this Bible the silver sword, what it now says. Because it offended people. People were offended to hear Lord Jesus called an it. I've got a daughter and when she was a baby in the pram she was dressed in pink a lot. She was a beautiful beautiful baby and people used to stop me in the street but they never said to me what's its name. They said what's her name? Don't refer to our Lord Jesus Christ as an it. Now I'm just going to find this scripture now, it's Matthew 2, find it here. Now it says, uh, the star went ahead of them until it came to a stop where the young child was. On seeing the star, they rejoiced with great joy, verse 11. And they went into the house and they saw the young child with Mary his mother. And falling down, they did obeisance. Oh, well, we know the word is worship now. To him. They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts. Now you've seen yourself. I have no reason to lie. It's in black and white. You've got a silver sword yourself. Get it out and have a look. Many of you have still got these. Get it out and have a look. And I will say, our Lord Jesus Christ is not an it. But that's not the only thing that we should be looking at, because that's shocking enough. But I'm going to show you something else from this black Bible at the back. We have um, Bible topics for discussion, it calls it. And it goes through. 
And on to J, we have uh, Jehovah God. Jehovah's Witnesses and Jesus, number 22. So Jesus is actually in the back of the Bible as somebody. If we want to learn about him and find out things about what he taught, we can find out a bit. There's not much about Jesus, but there is a bit in there about him. We can find it in there. But what happens when we find go to the silver sword? at the back of the Bible. Here we are. The same Bible topics and, and, and things like that. Under J, we have Jacob, Jedithan, Jehovah, Jew, Jubilee, Judah, Judges, Judgment Day, and Judgment Seat. Where is Jesus Christ? He's not even mentioned at all in this part of the Bible. His name's not there. They've taken him out. Oh, yes, they've put him as a him in there. But to compensate for that, they've removed him from the back. The glossary at the back. He's not there anymore. But who else can we find in the back of this Bible? Because they've taken Jesus away. Well... I'm going to just go back to the beginning of this uh, this section. Under B, we've got Baal, a Canaanite god. Under D, we've got Devil, Satan the Devil. Under, where we are. under M, we have Milken, a god worshipped by the Ammonites. And we have Molech, a false god. And if we go to the back under Q, we've got the Queen of the Heavens, a goddess. All these people are worthy of being worshipped in the, uh, being mentioned, sorry, in the back of this Bible. But our Lord Jesus Christ is nowhere to be seen. What a disgrace. How dare the Watchtower Society call themselves Christian witnesses? They're not Christian. They've got no respect for Jesus. They don't do the things that Jehovah God tells them to do about him. We know that the revelation says that all creation is to worship Jesus and his father. They don't do that. They refer to him as an it. And then they take him out of the Bible. And I remember getting, what is it, our Christian life and ministry. And I went through it. And not once, not one time, nothing. Jesus Christ was not mentioned once. His name wasn't there. And I was shocked at that. How can it call itself a Christian? Christian life? Well, what Christian life is it teaching us? If it isn't mentioning Christ. So 
So, I found this shocking. People I've pointed this out to is shocking. And you should find it shocking. You should find it shocking that the, that the early presidents taught that they should worship Jesus and nowhere can we find where Jesus, Je Jehovah or Jesus has said that's to change. The Watchtower Society has said it's to change and no one else. So, when you find out where Jehovah said this, then come to me and show me where I'm wrong. Because... I can't find it in here. I can't find it in here. The very books that they have produced to teach us about God. So, if you like what you've seen on this video, please like, share, and sh subscribe and share for and wide. I want to thank you for coming to my channel and for um, your lovely comments and sharing your views. I don't mind you sharing your views and opinions, but you know, don't shoot the messenger, I keep saying it. I'm only revealing what they've taught. And by their own words, the scripture says, I keep saying it and I'll say it again they'll be condemned because they can't keep t changing and flip-flopping back and forth and they want to take Jesus out of the picture it's something that I w an organisation I don't want to be part of so I just want to give a shout out to David I read his comment um, he left me a long comment about his, uh, some of the things that had happened in his life. And, um, you know, I just want to send, send out a ton of love to you. You've been through a really bad time. And, um, you know, we've just got to be patient because we know that the Lord knows, knows about these things. Jehovah knows about it. His son knows about it. And um, before too long, the Watchtower will be called to account. And amen to that. So for now, until the next video, I say bye.